Chapter 13, International Equity Market. This chapter of, again continue the coverage of international capital market uh, with discussion of the both the primary and the secondary equity market throughout the world. Okay. So what is the international equity market? At year end 2015, uh, I think that that's the textbook year, a total market cap of the 80 organized stock exchanges uh, tracked by the World Federation of Exchanges stood at 67 trillion, $125 billion. Ooh, it's a huge market, right? So international equity market is huge. I mean, we don't want to lose this opportunity. S&P merging market uh, database classify the stock market as emerging. So there is also developed market, but also there's emerging market. And what is the emerging market? If it meets at least one of the two criteria, number one, it is located in a low or middle income economy as defined by World Bank. So you can go to World Bank and uh, see if um, these countries are low or middle income economy, or its investable market capitalization is low relative to the, its most recent GNI figures. Gross national income figures, actually. So, um, I mean, there's a typical emerging market such as like the BRICS, the Brazil, Russia, India, China, things like that. I mean, there are lots of market developed and emerging. So the equity market of the developed world tends to much more liquid, actually, right? Because it the more demand for this developed world than the emerging market. So, well, while investor in the emerging market may be profit, more profitable because it requires high return with high risk, right? The investor's focus should be on the long term. It means that the emerging market may give you higher returns, but you can also have to uh, think in a long-term basis, long-term basis. So what is the structure of this international equity market? Like bond market, there's a primary market and secondary market. The primary market is the market that uh, provide the new shares directly from the issuing company. The secondary market is basically the market that's trade that is already issued. So secondary market provide the market participants with market abilities, right? And share evaluation. I mean, the major intention, like a major uh, motivation to buy the new share in the primary market is basically, what I wanna make money and how to make money? We can make money in secondary market. So firm would have a difficult time attracting buyers in primary market without this market ability, right? So the competitive trading between buyers and sellers in the secondary market also establish the fair market prices for existing issues. It actually make market more efficient because of this comp competition. So how to trade? Um, it's very similar to the stock trade. Um, there's market order that is ordered just at a spot price, current market price, buy or sell immediately. There's also limit orders, an order to the, your brokers to buy or sell at a certain price level. And when the timing also you can decide. If immediate execution is more important than the price, then you have to use market order. So these are the uh, characteristics of the major equity trading system. So there's a called a dealer market and agency market, first of all. So what is the dealer's market? Dealer's market is the one that broker takes the trade through the dealer who participate in trade as a principal by buying and selling the security for his own account. So public traders do not trade directly with one another in a dealer's market. It's OTC market usually, and it's generally for unlisted stock. So there's a dealer, there's a bid price, ask price, dealer make bid ask spread. 
However, the fam there's a very famous dealer's market, which is the National Association of the Security Dealer Automated Quot Quotation System, which is called NASDAQ. So see, NASDAQ is also a computer link system that shows the bid as prices of all dealers in the security. So it's not OTC market usually, but it's dealer's market. It's listed stock exchange, but it's dealer's market. On average, 14 dealers make a market in the NASDAQ traded issues. So that's what dealer's market is. Now, agency market is the market that broker takes the client's order through the agent who matches in a, with another public order. So it's also called the auction market or the uh, broker's market. The agent can be viewed as a broker's brokers also at the names of the agents are official broker and central broker. In the United States, the firms must meet a certain listing requirement in order to have their stock traded one of the several organized stock exchange. There's the two largest one, New York Stock Exchange and American Stock Exchanges. It's called an NYSC or MS. And these, this exchange market actually uh, is the agents or auction market. And each stock traded on the exchange is represented by a so-called specialist and who makes a market by holding an inventory of the security. So this specialist has a designated sta station on the exchange trading floor where trade in his stocks are conducted. Floor brokers bring the flow of public market orders for security to the specialist desk for execution. So that's how agency market works. The NYSE specialist system is agency market. And it's also continuous market, which is the market that can trade orders at any time during business hours. That's called a continuous market. Now, in recent years, most national stock markets have become automated for at least some of issues traded on them. So there's also called a fully automated market. The first fully automated market is the Toronto Stock Exchange in Canada, which in 1977 instituted a computer assisting trading system. An automated trading system electronically stores and displays public orders on a continuous basis and allow public traders to cross orders with one another to execute the trade without the assistance of the exchange personnel. These systems are very successful, right? Feel faster, fewer exchange personals are needed. So costly, cheaper, faster, easier to trade. That's why in some country now, the exchange trading floor has been completely eliminated. And we are more focused on this type of the automatic system now. So there are about 80 major national style market. And especially if you go to Europe, uh, I mean, they use same currencies, but they have about major, 20 major national market exchanges. 15 different languages are spoken. There may be some pressures that, you know, they combine one like European stock exchange like New York Stock Exchange. Maybe it will happen later on, but the lack of common security regulation, because each country has different regulation, right? Even among the countries of the European Union, because they're all each uh, their own sovereigns, right? It's kind of hard, make it hard to, to combine, consolidate, merge uh, into the one European um, exchanges. So today, stock markets around the world are under pressure from client and combine, you know, because they want to have faster, easier trade, more uh, like the less diversity. I mean, not really diversity, but I mean, the uh, if it is, it has 
like they want to have one regulation, one way to trade, and one platform, basically. So more pressure to combine and merge together. So during the 1980s, what kept the market began a trend toward greater global integrations. That's why we are focusing, you know, looking at these uh, global markets, right? Why? There's about four reasons. Number one, investors began to realize the benefits of international portfolio diversification. The major diversity is uh, internationally, the correlation is lower actually. So, you know, within domestic market, there's some kinds of costs that, I mean, your, the correlation among domestic stocks is higher than the stock in the US and the foreign country. So even though you have exposed similar level of the risk, sometimes you can diverse by more risk away because the correlation coefficient is lower. Okay, so that's first uh, motivation, global diversification. The second motivation is the major capital markets become more liberal or liberalized through the elimination of fixed trading commissions, the reduction in governmental regulation and the measures taken by European Union to integrate their capital markets. So they're more integrated now. New computer and communication technology basically make the market more efficient and fair security trading through order routing and execution, information disseminations and clearance and settlements easier to integrate basically, right? So you, our technology make us easier to invest and uh, integrate it with the, uh, uh, the other countries' market. Multinational co co corporations, companies realize that, uh, well, international source of the funding is also beneficial, such as the, if you wanna raise money the, in Japan, you have Japanese branches then rather than issuing the, the dollars, like the stocks in the U.S. and just raise dollars, you can actually you know, go to Tokyo and raise yen. That's another benefit, right? So multinational companies, the nationality of the parents' company now make the importance, it gets less important right now, actually, than before. So uh, they may diversify the financing source uh, into the, uh, is, uh, the globally, you know. Okay. You can also see the cross listing of shares. So it is equally shares listed on one or more foreign exchanges, as I said, right? So multinational companies does not, do not have to actually list their firm in one, one exchange, but in multiple exchanges. It may expand the investor base for the firm. It is established the name recognition for the firm in the new capital market, right? It may offer marketing advantages. By the way, expanding investor base is very important advantages for the firm from emerging market countries. So I don't have enough uh, resource of funds in my country, then we can go to another country to finance. Again, marketing advantage is important. Now, the fourth one, if you can cross list in the developed market, the developed market usually has stricter security regulation and information disclosure requirements. It means that in, investor may believe that this company has better corporate governance, which is good, or they at least will improve the corporate governance, which is beneficial to the investor. It's, so to attract a potential investor, they basically can at least their firm in the developed market, which gives it require them to have better corporate governance. They also may mitigate the possibility of wholesale takeover. Okay. So uh, the first um, part of the slide will stop here uh, and we will see the 
different types of the now the uh, the offerings international offerings in the u.s and in other countries too 